Elon Musk's dream of going to Mars is now further away than ever. After recent problems with Starship, many experts argue that the current version isn't ready for a risky six-month mission to Mars. Even with improvements to Musk's spacecraft, there are still major technical issues in the larger plan that make it hard to believe it will succeed. But now, a bold new idea has emerged. It focuses on SpaceX's largest spacecraft. This time, however, it will feature a smaller, more agile version called the Starship Mini. This Starship is quickly becoming the most realistic way for humans to reach Mars. What is the Starship Mini? How could it help us send humans to Mars? Let's discuss it all in today's episode of NR Studio. Every time we look into this vast and mysterious universe using the knowledge we have, there's one feeling that keeps coming back. The feeling that we, as humans, are incredibly small in the bigger picture. For example, imagine a trip to Mars. It would be 225 million kilometers just to get to the red planet. That's only about 1.9% of the width of the solar system. If we measure all the way to Pluto, that's about 11.8 billion kilometers. Even that small distance presents a tremendous challenge for humans. Elon Musk still believes passionately in his grand dream of one day seeing humans walk on Mars. SpaceX, the company he founded, aims to make what many consider impossible a reality. SpaceX plans to refuel the upper stage of Starship in Earth orbit before setting off on its long journey to Mars. Relying solely on Starship for a complete round trip is incredibly ambitious, especially since no humans have ever been to Mars. Experts say Musk's plan still carries many risks. One of the biggest issues is fuel. Even if Starship were to refuel in orbit around Earth, it would still need a lot of fuel for the trip to Mars. Sure, the Raptor engines wouldn't be running all the time, but we're still talking about a distance of over 200 million kilometers. When the spacecraft arrives, Mars will have a much thinner atmosphere than Earth's. This means it won't be able to create enough air resistance to slow the spacecraft down upon landing. This means Starship will have to use its own engines to slow down, which uses precious fuel to land safely. So by the time it reaches the Martian surface, Starship will have exhausted most of its fuel. So how will astronauts return to Earth? That's when producing fuel on site becomes crucial. They'll need to create liquid methane and liquid oxygen directly on Mars using local materials and technologies that NASA is still developing. As Dr. Robert Zuberin, an American aerospace engineer who inspired Elon Musk's Mars dreams, points out, using a large vehicle like Starship for a round trip to Mars may be impractical. Starship weighs about 235 tons when empty. According to Zubrin's estimates, it would take about 580 tons of liquid oxygen and methane to travel from low Earth orbit to Mars. Starship can carry up to 1,200 tons of fuel, but most of it is used just for the journey to space. To fully refuel the 580 tons needed for the trip to Mars, five more tanker launches are needed. That's a total of six launches for just one mission. The return journey is even more challenging. After releasing the cargo, Starship weighs about 115 tons. However, it still needs 600 tons of fuel for the launch from Mars and return to Earth. Producing that much liquid methane and liquid oxygen on Mars is incredibly complex and time-consuming. It would use CO2 from the Martian air and water through a chemical process based on the Sabatier reaction. Zubrin estimates it would take about 500 days to produce 600 tons of propellant, if all goes well. And there's more. The process requires a nuclear power plant capable of providing a constant 600 kilowatts of power. That's enough energy to power about 40 homes for a day. That in itself is a major technical challenge. Russia and China are already working together to solve this problem. Zubrin believes that because of all these requirements, Starship may not be the best option for sending humans to Mars. That's why Dr. Zubrin suggests a better, more efficient option, supported by many space experts. This option is called the Mini Starship, and it's a key part of his new plan, Mars Direct 2. Zubrin says, there's a lot to like about SpaceX's plan to go to Mars. In fact, it all started with an idea of mine called Mars Direct. Before we get into Mars Direct, let's first understand what a mini starship is and how it relates to the overall Mars mission plan. It's a smaller, more efficient spacecraft created by Dr. Zubrin, a scaled-down version of Starship. It's designed to travel from Earth orbit to Mars and land on the red planet's surface. Here's how the plan works. The large starship sends the small starship into a high orbit around Earth 
approaching the speed needed to escape from the planet. Afterward, the mini starship travels to Mars on its own, while the main starship returns to Earth to refuel and prepare to send another mini starship, much like a shuttle bus. The miniaturized starship uses five times less fuel than the original. It can still carry about a third of the payload or crew, which is sufficient for initial exploration missions. Most importantly, it uses significantly less fuel for the return journey, making it easier to produce fuel on Mars. According to Dr. Zubrin, this method allows SpaceX to use Starship more frequently without being stuck on Mars for extended periods. This means faster results and completing more tasks in less time. The Starship may not be able to accommodate 100 people as Elon Musk envisions, but for the first missions, that's not necessary. Finding 100 volunteers willing to leave Earth and travel to unexplored new worlds might be a bigger challenge than building a rocket. It's a fun question. If SpaceX invited people to volunteer for a trip to Mars with all the perks and benefits, would you go? If so, type let's do it in the comments or share your thoughts below. Okay, let's take a closer look at the plan. Sure, this mini starship won't hold as much cargo as a full-size starship, but the difference isn't as big as you might think. Here's why. While a regular starship can send a smaller version into space, that smaller vehicle would only need about 33 tons of the 100-ton total to reach Mars, assuming it weighs about 20 tons empty. We're talking about 50 tons of cargo delivered by a spacecraft much smaller than the original starship. This plan would allow a small group of about 10 people to land on Mars. They would plant a flag, conduct scientific experiments, and collect a lot of Martian soil and rocks to bring back to Earth. They would also build a small nuclear power plant to help with the work on a very difficult planet to live on. Mars is notoriously difficult to live on. Dust storms are common, especially in the southern hemisphere during the spring and summer when there is more sunlight. Then there are the famous global dust storms, large events that can cover the entire planet. These occur approximately every five to 10 years on Earth. One of the most dramatic events occurred in 2018, when a massive storm on Mars covered the entire planet. This storm caused the end of NASA's Opportunity rover mission due to insufficient sunlight. That's why relying solely on solar panels isn't the best option. Nuclear power is much more reliable. However, it's best to use both options simultaneously unless there are problems. After a stay of about six months to a year, the crew will begin their return journey. Because these mini spacecraft use only 1 16th the fuel of their full-size counterparts, the slightly larger mini spacecraft can travel more easily, making the return journey much more feasible. When it's time to return home, the 20-ton Starship will only need two engines, one Vacuum Raptor and one Sea Raptor. The final 12 tons can be stored for the crew quarters. This smaller payload requires less fuel, making the entire mission much easier to complete. Since its launch, Mars Direct 2 has received a lot of support from the space community. One of its biggest supporters is Migo Hera, a brilliant student from Spain. He developed the idea and created a safer and better version called Mars Direct 3. The Mars Direct 3 plan includes four spacecraft for the mission. Amazingly, even if three of the four fail, the crew can still succeed. Let me explain how it works. It starts with the first two ships. These are two types of starship a full-size one called A and a smaller version called Mini-A. Both came during the initial launch period. A is the main fuel-making site. It has a CO2 collector, water and CO2 systems, a solar-powered rover, a Sabatier reactor, and a hydrogen tank. If we can't get water from the Martian surface, we can still make fuel by mixing carbon dioxide from the air with stored hydrogen. Solar panels generate electricity regardless of the method used. Although Mini-A hasn't been assembled for its journey to Mars, it will be ready for human habitation. Inside, it will have life support systems, enough food and supplies for two years, a recycling system for water and waste, ample living space, and everything astronauts need. It will also have two backup units for making oxygen from carbon dioxide and a rover to explore the surface. About two years later, when it's time for the next launch, if all goes well, Mini B will arrive. This is the first basic spacecraft. It will carry the astronauts who begin their science work, plant the flag, and most importantly, prepare the rover to transport fuel. The rover will transport fuel from A to Mini A and Mini B in case it's needed. 
Finally, the final spacecraft to arrive is a large cargo spaceship. It will provide ice mining equipment, a large rover capable of long-distance exploration, and the first parts of a long-term home. If all goes well, this setup could allow the crew to travel hundreds of kilometers from their landing site and stay on Mars for longer. After that, we can start sending more starships to transport the many supplies needed to build a complete Mars base and do it much faster. With up to four reusable launch pads that require no maintenance, these starships can take off just a few hours apart. This may be the best way to quickly establish a permanent human presence on Mars. After all, if we want to start a long-term colony on Mars and explore the planet safely, then Mars Direct 3.0 is definitely one of the best options we have. That's all for today's episode. See you in the next one. And thank you all for your support.